Hi, uh, good morning. Um, so the first session today is going to be introduction to PyTest with Andreas Pelm, who uh, is also the maintainer of the uh, PyTest uh, Django library. So, Andreas. Yeah, thank you. So. <laughs> Hi. So. I usually I work at a place called Personal Column. We build a time tracking and a salary application. And uh, in order to manage that, we write a lot of tests and we use PyTest. So today I'm going to try to show you some uh, good things with PyTest and how you can make use of that when you write your tests. So these are kind of the topics I want to uh, cover today. Uh, I'm going to show you what PyTest is. Uh, I'm going to show you how, to, how you can write tests with less boilerplate code. I'm going to show some useful plugins and the plugin system of PyTest. Uh, and I'm also going to disca uh, discuss how the test discovery is done. Uh, and then I'm going to show a feature of PyTest that's called fixtures, uh, which is really cool. And then I'm going to discuss how you can port your existing projects to make use of PyTest in an easy way. So first, uh, testing. The kind of testing that I'm going to talk about today is uh, automated uh, software tests that verify that your software works correctly. Uh, and this can be anything from small, fast-running unit tests to more higher-level tests that uh, test your entire system, and, or anything in between there. So before we get started, how many of you are familiar with the unit test module in the standard Python uh, um, the chips with Python. <laughs> yeah, you've used it. You can, uh, yeah, you know how, uh, roughly how it works. Okay, good. Um, and how many of you are already PyTest users or have used PyTest? Okay, that's good. So, PyTest is a full featured testing tool for Python. So, that means it does everything from uh, test collection to run the test to give you the output uh, on whether which test failed and passed. Um, and it also has uh, some other nice feature that help you maintain a test suit and help you organize it in a good way. And uh, you can run anything from those short unit tests to more system level testing with PyTest. It, it scales like in both directions there. Uh, you can also use it if you do TDD, it fits very nice, or, uh, and it's easy to integrate with uh, continuous integration systems such as Jenkins that works out of the box. So here are some people that are happy with PyTest, uh, and it's used in some, uh, also some bigger organizations, in both commercial and uh, open source projects. So, uh, one important, one thing that I find really nice about PyTest is that it allows you to write tests with less boilerplate code. Uh, and to show you what I mean by this, I'm going to show you a little uh, demo. So, let's see. So, I have um, a test file here, um, which contains a very, very simple test, uh, and it uses the... I can make, make it bigger. Yes, it uses unit tests. So this is probably familiar to most of you. So we basically just uh, make sure that the, the return value of this function is uh, what we expect it to be. Uh, and I can run this with, uh, uh, by invoking the unit test module, and it collects the test and runs it. So if I instead use PyTest, what we do is uh, we invoke the test suite from the pi.test command. So if I run that, uh, it finds the test and it runs it. Uh, the output is, outputs, output is slightly different, but it's the same thing. So I want you to notice that PyTest can run uh, existing unit tests uh, just as they are. But we're going to change this test uh, to make it um, to show some features of PyTest. So, the first thing I'm going to change is uh, the assertion. Instead of using assert equal, I'm just going to use the plain assert statement that's built into Python. 
So I'm changing this uh, and just use the equal operator to make sure that the uh, output, output is the expected one. Uh, and the next, next thing is that we don't actually longer need to subclass from the unit test test case. So we can simply just remove that. And in fact, we don't need to, we're not anymore required to wrap our, all our test cases in a class. So we can just remove the class too. Uh, and since we don't have the test case anymore, we can just remove the unit test import. So this is what we're left with. Um, so let's just save this and run it. So it works the same. Um, I just want to show you what happens if we get a failure. So it's really important that you get useful feedback uh, on your failures when, you, when your test does, does not pass. So let's assume we, we introduce a bug here, just add some garbage to the output and we save and we run the test again. So what you can see here is that you get a very nice detailed output and you even get some colors in them uh, that shows you exactly what the wrong value was and where it failed. So this was the code before and this is the after code. So what I did was I used a search statement instead of uh, search equal. Uh, and PyTest can handle pretty much anything you throw at the search statement. It's, it's very smart. It can, uh, you, if, for instance, if you check for a dictionary key or something like that and it doesn't exist, it will give you a very nice output. So it's hard to find a case where it doesn't work well. Uh, also, sub, we did not have to subclass from test case anymore. And we didn't have to uh, put our tests in a class at all. But we can still do that if we like. Uh, that could be, can be kind of nice to, to group your tests. And we invoke the test suit by running the pi.test command, uh, which collects and runs the tests. So one thing about PyTest is uh, it has a very powerful plugin system. So uh, in your own project, you have a lot of hooks into PyTest that you can use to customize how tests are collected, how they are picked up, and how they are invoked. Uh, and you have the same kind of hooks uh, into PyTest in your own project that uh, third-party plugins has access to. So these are some plugins uh, that extend the capabilities of PyTest. Um, there are a lot more, but these are the probably the most popular ones. Uh, the PyTest XDist uh, plugin, it provides distributed testing. So you can actually run your tests on directly on, have them distributed to remote machines, or you can run them locally on your own machines in uh, parallel processes to, to have some nice speed ups. I'll come back to XDist later. Uh, and there's the PyTest Django plugin, which uh, helps to integrate with with Django uh, and with Django test suits and um, make them run directly. There's also uh, support for running twisted plugin, twisted tests. And there's a lot, lots of other plugins. And for instance, if you do log capturing, uh, you can install the capture log plugin. So uh, how to actually run the tests. I showed you in the demo. Uh, by just invoking pi.test, you run all the tests. And pytest will recursively search all directories uh, to find test files. So this, this is usually what you do to run your entire test suite. Uh, but then you can also limit the tests you run in one invocation by just specifying the file names uh, of the test files that you want to run. Uh, and this, of course, works very nice with the standard uh, like tab completion in, in your shell. So it's uh, very convenient to use. You can also match, uh, you can also select tests based on uh, the test's name. So K stands for keyword, and uh, this can be used to find a specific test if you don't want to type the directory. So as I told you, uh, PyTest 
recurses into directories and finds test files. And by default, it looks into uh, files that matches these patterns. And you can, of course, change that if you like, if your project structure looks different. But that's a kind of same default. There is another way of uh, organizing your tests with PyTest. You can use the marking functionality. Uh, so you can make up arbitrary marks. Uh, I just made up this slow mark. For instance, if you want to uh, mark your all the tests that are very slow, so, uh, and then you may not want to run them, or you may want to run them. Uh, you may want to filter them out. You can put any. Uh, you can put multiple marks on one test if you like. So this is how you run only the tests with that specific mark. And in this case, this might actually be more useful because you may not want to run them that, as often. There are also markers that are built into PyTest, for instance, uh, the skip if marker. Uh, so you can also annotate some extra data within the marker for each test. So in this case, uh, this test will simply be skipped if you run it on Mac OS. But you can implement, you can implement your own uh, logic with markers by yourself. It's uh, in, in your project, uh, specific things to your project. So I'd like to take some time to go a bit into uh, a feature in PyTest that is called uh, fixtures. So fixtures is a mechanism for uh, injecting objects that you need for your tests. Uh, in a, in a very structured way. Um, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about right now, so I'm going to try to to give a demo of this. So um, we have two tests here, which use. Uh, has any, do you know what Selenium is, by the way? Uh, yeah, it's, so it's, uh, it's a way to remote control a web browser. Uh, and that can be very useful for tests. Uh, so I'm using that on as, as an example here. Uh, so I have two tests. They will navigate to these websites. They will look at the title of the websites and uh, verify that, it, uh, that Nix is in the Nix, OS, uh, Nix package manager website and that PyTest in, is in the PyTest website. Um, so I'll walk you through what happens here. So when PyTest finds this uh, test with uh, the web driver argument in the argument list, it will uh, try to construct this uh, a value, the value for this argument. So in order to do that, it looks for any fixtures that are named WebDriver. So it works by looking on the, at, on the name of the argument itself. Uh, and in order to register how these fixtures are constructed, you, use, uh, you create a function with the same name. And then you uh, annotate that function with the, the PyTest fixture decorator. So the, this uh, function should return the object that we want to have passed into the test. So in this instance, I just create a Firefox uh, web driver instance. Uh, and I also add uh, some code that will run uh, in the process of a teardown when the tests are finished, how to clean up after this test. And so I uh, add this um, uh, driver quit. It's a method that will be invoked after the test, and then simply return the driver. So this is what happens for the first test, and then for the next test, the same thing will happen. It will be constructed once again and passed in, and then the test will run, and then the web driver will quit. OK, so let's, let's just run this and see what happens. And the hope for uh, that the wireless are with me. OK, so we can see, OK, so it seemed to work well. <laughs> it was very fast. So um, 
we had Firefox start up, close down, and start up for the other test. So that's, that's what uh, we expected. One very important point of fixtures is that you move the, the dependency construction out of the test case themselves. So the test case is not concerned about how the, the test fixtures are set up. And this has some nice uh, implications. So we can, for instance, you saw that Firefox started twice. Let's say we want to, we want to use the same uh, instance of Firefox for both of our tests. That is really simple. Uh, and actually, everything we have to do is to add, uh, we have, have to tell PyTest how uh, this uh, fixture should be, should be scoped or how it should be cached. So we just add this, uh, and PyTest will then cache this fixture object for the entire ses uh, test session. So this means that if we try to run it again, it might be very fast, but we should only see one, uh, one Firefox window showing up. Okay. Oh yeah, it was very fast. But uh, you see, it, it, uh, it can certainly speed your tests up uh, uh, very nice uh, for in a lot of cases. For instance, creating a database. Let's imagine your tests uh, need a database with the schemas and everything in them. Then you can just create it once uh, before all tests run, uh, and then have it reused uh, for every test. And the, the other thing with when we separate the creation of the fixtures is that these tests don't need to be concerned of what kind of browser we use. We can, for instance, change this to Chrome, and uh, we'll have it just work. And we can even generate. Uh, more test invocations, we can generate new tests by parameter parameterizing this fixture. So we can actually trigger each test to run in multiple browsers just by changing this fixture definition. So another thing I want to talk about, I mentioned the PyTest XDist plugin earlier. Uh, it is a way to run your tests in parallel. So that can be that can give you a very nice speed up because most people have uh, multi-core machines these days. Um, so the good thing is it's really easy to use it. So if I want to if we want to speed up these tests, uh, we can just run them in parallel. So I already installed the PyTest XDist plugin. So if we specify dash n, we can uh, instruct PyTest to run these parallel. So I just start two process now, and this will, this will probably be very fast, but let's see if we can. Yeah, there are, you saw there are two Firefox uh, browsers at the same time, so these tests now run in parallel. Um, so that's a very easy way to speed up the runtime of your test suite. You just install PyTest XDist and you run it with dash M2, for instance. So my own test suit, it usually takes about two minutes to run. And when I run it on my machine with, uh, uh, in four processes, it's uh, about 30 seconds. So it can give you very nice speed ups. So once again, the, it's the dependency injection and it's based on the name of the arguments and the name of the fixture function. Uh, that's how, how they map together and how, how they are found. One well, question about pictures. Um, you may change the, you can set different pictures in the same file and use different uh, pictures at the same time. For example, you can define some pictures for Firefox and other for Chrome, for example, and make them run as, uh, sequentially, first for Firefox and then for Chrome. Yes. Uh, so, so in this case, uh, you you if you want to have both Firefox and Chrome run, uh, you specify the implementation of of this fixture it itself. So, uh, you instruct. Uh, I I have I don't have time to show you that now, but you can uh, tell PyTest to for each uh, each time a test needs this fixture, invoke it twice: once with Firefox and one once with Chrome. Um, 
And you can also you can also use multiple fixtures. Just add more more fixtures to the argument list of other. You can, you might want to have a database. You might want to have access to, to something else too, or just another object. So you can you can use multiple fixtures in the argument list. Uh, and you can also uh, so the web driver fixture for in in in, for, uh, in this case it can depend on other fixtures too. Uh, but I won't go more into detail about fixtures. This is just, uh, it's very powerful and it can be used in a lot of different scenarios. Uh, yes, yes, I'm, uh, I'm gonna tell you about it. Uh, so um, I also showed uh, the XDIST. It's, it it uh, doesn't really have anything to do with fixtures, but it's, uh, a nice way to speed up your tests. So, and this is how easy it is to get started with it. Just install it and then uh, run with the, the n command line. And you can all do all sorts of uh, remote distributed tests with it too, but this is the simple case. So I want to talk a bit about how you can port, if you want to switch to PyTest, how, how you can, a good strat strategy for doing that. Uh, so I showed you that the unit test was just, the test case was just picked up by PyTest. Uh, and there, there is also su actually support for NOSE style tests. So if you use NOSE currently, you can probably just switch to PyTest and it should mostly work out of, out of the box. And if you install the PyTest Django plugin, your PyTest, uh, your Django test suits should also run as they are. So the, in that way, you can just start using the PyTest command to run your tests, and then you can gradually write new tests in this uh, lighter style. And you can make use of fixtures, and then you can change your existing tests over time, or you can just leave them as they are. But even, even uh, unit tests and NOSE tests, uh, they all get benefits such as the parallelization from XDIST. So you don't have to go and throw all your tests away and start over in order to start using PyTest. It's, uh, you can switch gradually. Yes, so I highly recommend that if you want to know more about fixtures that you go visit Floris' talk uh, this afternoon about fixtures. So I just scratched on the surface on what you can do with fixtures and he will show, show you more advanced uses of them. So don't, don't miss that talk. Uh, and also, there will be a training uh, with Holger Krekel, who is the main author of PyTest. Uh, so that will be on Friday. I'm not sure if it's still possible to sign up for the trainings, but uh, check that out if you're interested. And uh, I will do some sprinting on the PyTest Django uh, bindings and the plugin on in the sprint. So feel free to to join uh, in there if you like to get started with it or see what it's all about. So yeah, feel free to just come and talk to me if you have any questions after, or I guess we might have time for some questions. Five minutes, okay, cool. Uh, where you started to discuss fixtures, uh, where does the request uh, argument come from? Oh yeah, uh, that's a good, uh, good question. So uh, the request argument, it is a special fixture uh, that you can use to get information. You can introspect the surroundings. Uh, you can get, uh, for instance, if you need access to a command line argument from a, within a fixture, it's available on the, request, uh, on the request object. So you can leave it out in the fixture definition if you like, if you don't have any use for it. Uh, but it provides uh, access to uh, to PyTest basically, so you, that you can communicate with it. So it's a special uh, fixture that gets passed in to, to this fixture. More questions? Yeah. Um, right, um, I'm not very convinced, I must say. So my question is, what features of PyTest you would say you use every day and you wouldn't find in other things like unit test or nose and stuff like that because just not having a class and inheriting from unit test or test case is not a very strong argument for me at least. I don't know. 
I would say that the fixtures is the really unique feature, uh, and it's it's hard to to show you how how powerful they are in this short time. But they you can combine them in different way and combine the caching and the scoping of them, and you can parameterize them, and you can really have your have a very good structure of how your tests are invoked. So I would say that that is the absolutely biggest. Uh, like feature of PyTest when if you compare it to to other frameworks. Um, hi, uh, I have a question. How much more difficult it gets to debug your tests with PyTest? So in Unitest, you need to do much more work. So you don't have these nice features, but you do everything explicitly. And here you have a lot of features uh, that are nice, but they hide. Um, um, so the work it is done by itself. But you use it every day, so uh, is it gets more difficult to find problems in your tests? Um, well, I've used it for a while, so, uh, but uh, I wouldn't say it's harder to debug it, and there are all sorts of. Uh, you can you can run like PyDot test collect only, and it will show you how it collects the tests, and you can have uh, all sorts of different outputs. Uh, you can have very verbose outputs if you really. You can get a lot of information about the failure failures. So in, in that sense, I guess you get can get more information out of PyTest than uh, with standard unit tests, but. Um, no, I don't see it as a problem. I, I, I don't really see that it makes it harder to debug anything. Thanks. Any more questions? So I've used PyTest a little bit recently, and one of the problems I've found with it is the test discovery. So it's one of the advantages that you don't need to um, a lot of kind of info in your class for it to find the tests. But if there's something wrong, like one of the examples is I had a mock.patch on the test, but I missed out the T in patch and it couldn't find the test. So it wasn't running and I didn't realize that it wasn't running. Is there anything where you can find out tests that haven't run? Um, well, it, it should run tests that are mocked. <coughs> you use the mock decorator? Or yeah, it was just because I had a, a mistake in it though, so I had misspelled patch, so it hadn't found it. Um, but I didn't realize that it hadn't run. Oh, okay. Because uh, I didn't check every kind of test. You should, I think you should have uh, gotten an exception then, an error if, if you misspelled the, the patch decorate or something like that. It should have failed during the collection phase. Yeah, there was nothing. Yeah, it just it didn't even try to run. Oh, OK. Right. I'm not sure in that particular case. But if, if there are errors during like in, importing things or standard errors like that, uh, they should be shown. Yeah. Right. Oh, so you, a flag to show uh, the skipped tests, or yeah, so the report skipped uh, command line argument, I guess. Yeah, then you can show all the skipped tests. Thanks. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Andreas.